Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'll be showing you my dividend income payments for the month of September 2020. And I'll also at the end of the video, I'll be showing you how the dividend cuts of 2020 have affected this current month in my portfolio and in regards to dividends received or dividends not received in this case. So as I thought it'd be a good time to show that as because there's a few dividend pay, paying companies this month who have actually cut the dividend. So I want to see the chain reaction it has on the income obviously for the month. Obviously, before we get into the video, guys, if you're new, definitely consider subscribing. I want a goal to get to 2,000 subscribers. And also, don't forget to smash the thumbs up if you like the video. And if you feel an extra nice, leave a comment as well. I really can't stress this enough how much um, interactions and likes and comments help this channel in general, but get boosted out to larger audiences greater than the one I currently have. So with that out of the way, we'll get straight into it now. So the first dividend that I received was for a massive six pence. Yeah, massive. From Wells Fargo. They're one of the uh, four companies who um, have slashed dividends. So we're going over the them as a whole at the end. So six pence on the 1st of September. The next up we have is Intel again on the 1st of September. He paid me 21 pence. So with that, uh, the 21 pence from Intel, it takes the income to 27p so far for the month. Again, on the same day, 1st of September, I received 96 pence, which was from Pfizer. So three dividends in one day, which isn't too bad. Not massive ones, but better than nothing, I suppose. So with that from Pfizer, it now takes the 96 pence dividend from um, Pfizer. It takes the income to £1.23 pence so far for September. Then next up we have is Johnson & Johnson. I had to wait seven days for this dividend. They paid me £1.36. Yeah, obviously, good dividend king. Yeah, really good yield. Uh, Johnson & Johnson, very solid. So if that £1.36 dividend added on to the income, it now takes it to £2.59 so far for the month. So to wait two days for my next dividend, which was from Microsoft, which was for 67 pence. Microsoft, obviously, massive company, been doing, uh, rather than the dividends, have been performing really well growth-wise, which is good. And obviously not a bad little dividend as well for just the two shares. So with that 67 pence uh, added on to the income, it takes it to £3.26. So I had to wait 10 more days for my next dividend, which was from Royal Dutch Shell on 21st September, and they paid me £1.20. Oil and gas really been struggling recently. Again, as you, the dividend um, is quite as low compared to what it used to, but I'll get into that at the end. So with that £1.20 from Shell, it takes it to £4.46 in dividend income so far for the month. So four days later, which is unusual because BP usually pay on the same day as Shell, but anyway, another oil and gas payment for £1.41. And with that £1.41 added on to the total, it now takes it to £5.87 in dividends. So five more days later, I had to wait, and the next dividend I received was from PepsiCo, which was for 67 pence on the 30th of September. But just only one share currently on a PepsiCo. I would like to get my hands on more of this stock. So with that 67 pence added on to the dividend uh, income, I am now up to £6.54 pence. And then the last dividend that I received on the month was on the very, very last day of September, I think. Was it 30 days in September? I'm not too sure. But anyway, it was the 30th of September and I received £1.45 in dividends from Imperial Brands. So that takes the dividend income for this month as a total to £7.99. So it's not as much as last month, guys, but it's still it's not bad. Just under £8, but as I'm going to show you now, it could have been much more. So basically, there's four stocks who, who have cut the dividend. There's Shell, BP, Imperial Brands, and Wells Fargo. So we're just going over just for just interesting to see really what they used to pay me and now what they pay me this time. So obviously, as you can see, Shell they pay me one pound twenty pence for ten shares. Uh, for obviously for what twelve pence a share, but before that, Shell were currently paying forty seven pence per share in dividends. So if I'd have had the same amount of shares as I did now. With the old yield, I would have received £4.70, pence, which is quite a big increase. So the next share is BP. They paid obviously £1.40 or £1.41, it says on free trade. Um, so now they're paying currently four pence per share, and I got 30, I had 36 shares on the ex dividend date for this for BP, so they paid me £1.40. But before that, they used to pay eight pence a share. So obviously the income would have doubled to two pound eighty. Again, quite a big increase. Obviously it's halved. Then we have Imperial Brands who for this period paid me one pound forty-five. 
and at 20 pence per share, 20.85 pence per share. But before that, not too long ago, they were paying a whopping 72 pence per share. So for my seven shares that I own, I would have had five pounds and four pence in dividends from Imperial Brands. And then the last one, obviously Wells Fargo, I only own one share of Wells Fargo, but they paid six pence per share now. But before that, they paid 34 pence per share. So I would have gained 34 pence. So if you're wondering, this month I received £4.11 from those four companies in dividends, but if it was beforehand, I would have received a total of £12.88, which is a loss of almost £9, guys. So if you add that £9 onto my dividend income for this month, it would have taken me to around £17. So it's quite a big drop, really. But it is interesting to see, but hopefully these companies start upping the dividends again soon. Obviously, it's been a tough year so far. But obviously, the investor has got to grind it out, so I'll keep faith that the dividends will come back. And the fact that the companies haven't got rid of them completely is a good sign. So obviously, quite a lot of UK banking stocks have got rid of their dividends, and I know a lot of other companies have too. So, guys, that is it for the video today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. It really does boost the channel. So, I'm going to leave you to it today, guys. Take care. Bye.